Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Sunday morning and the old cookbook show. Today we're gonna to do a recipe out of this Australian cookbook, Miss Gibbs Cookery Guide. Um, the book itself is undated. There, there's absolutely no date in here anywhere. And it's, um, it's associated with uh, the Miss A. Gibbs. She's the principal of the School of Cookery uh, in Sydney. All of my research points to sometime in the early 1930s and a bunch of different sources, um, official sources about this book, researchers about this book, give different dates. So some say 32, some say 35, could have been published multiple times over the years. Let's just go safely and say 1930s. And today we're going to do something called chocolate fingers. I'm kind of excited by these. Um, they sound really good to me. So we're gonna start out in a stand mixer and we're gonna soften up the butter first. And once the butter is softened up, we will cream in the sugar. The volume of ingredients in this recipe are quite small. It's going to make a manageable number of chocolate fingers. Um, there's barely enough ingredients for the stand mixer to mix it. Next in is some melted chocolate. So. I'm just going to open this up because I'll make a mess everywhere. And I just melt my chocolate in the microwave now. I know that's cheating. Works for me. So we'll get all that chocolate in and then we'll mix it together. Okay. Mixer back on. Now the recipe calls for one well beaten egg. Um, Look at that beautiful, pretty blue egg uh, from one of my cousin Jill's hens. In this time period, beating your egg before you put it into the rest of the mixture um, was often asked for. With a stand mixer, it doesn't really matter. You can just put the egg in, it's going to mix it. But if you're doing it by hand with a wooden spoon, this step of beating up the egg first is definitely helpful. So. In goes the egg. Next, flour and baking soda. Now the recipe doesn't specifically call out mixing the baking powder into the flour. Um, that's an admonition that comes later in other cookbooks. Uh, in this time period, you often just put them in all separately or you mixed it with a liquid just to see if it would react uh, first before you put it in to test whether it was any good because in this time period, again, some of your baking powders and baking sodas uh, weren't good by the time you went to use them. Best practice, just mix it in. You don't, have to, uh, you don't have to be too thorough with the mixing. And at this point, flour into the chocolate mixture. A little bit at a time. And the last of the flour. Okay, so we've got a pretty stiff ball of dough and I'm supposed to roll it out to a quarter inch thick. Um, I'm gonna put a little bit of flour down on my bench just so it doesn't stick. Uh, it seems like a fairly sticky dough even though it's fairly thick. And I don't know if I'm gonna roll it out. I may just pat it out with my hand. Often that um, works out just as well as getting out the, the rolling pin and getting the rolling pin dirty. So quarter inch or your version of a quarter inch. And I think that's probably a quarter inch that padded out faster than even going over to the cupboard and getting the rolling pin. Now I'm supposed to put a little bit of, um, oh, brush with a little milk. Wait a sec. brush with a little milk. So, um, I'll get a little milk. It's not going to take much, not much milk at all, probably less than a tablespoon to get the top of this wet. <laughs> and then I'm supposed to sprinkle on some chopped nuts. I've got, um, I've got some ground almonds that I'm going to put on. You're all supposed to cut this into fingers, which I will do, but kind of felt like it would be easier to get the nuts on. 
um, before I cut it. Okay, so that milk will go into my tea. I'll sprinkle on the ground almonds. Again, probably only a tablespoon of ground almonds. I think that's probably enough. And pizza wheel, my favorite thing for cutting like this. And I think I'll cut that in half. Yeah, just like that. Now it says to put it onto a buttered tin. Um, I've put down a piece of parchment paper. Accomplishes the same sort of thing. Break that apart, there we go. Um, parchment paper is pretty much the same as buttered tin and it's easier for cleanup. And I am someone who reuses my parchment paper when I'm baking cookies like this. I'll do it three or four times. Although if I'm baking like a chocolate chip cookie, I don't put anything down. I don't put butter on the tin. I don't put down the parchment paper. I just cook the cookie directly on the pan um, and I never have any problems with sticking. This one I'm a little bit worried about because of the chocolate. I'm not sure how the chocolate is going to react. So oven preheated. It says a slow oven. I'm preheated to 320 degrees Fahrenheit and these bake for quite a while. 15 to 20 minutes. Hey, hey Glenn. Woohoo! More cookies. More cookies. Chocolate fingers from an Australian cookbook. Okay. Um, undated, 1930s. It's kind of cool. Uh, I can't find it now. There's color pictures in it, Ooh. which are hand painted. They're not actually color photographs, they're just hand painted. Oh, there's one. Look at that. Yeah. That's amazing. A beetroot mold. Okay, so, you know, I happen to pick the jello mold section. Yes, okay. Jello so, salad section. But, so, but they do look beautiful. They do look beautiful. They are wonderful. Wow, this must have been a very expensive book. I would think so. I would think so. Um, so, chocolate fingers. Miss Gibbs went all out. I don't know that I've ever had anything like this. Okay. Maybe. Hmm. Not my thing. Cocoa? Chocolate. No, it's, it's chocolate. Okay. Yeah. They're a bit dry. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's, you know, maybe we cooked them too long? I don't know. I mean, I think dipped in tea they might be okay. <clears throat> But I, I was trying to envision whether they would be soft like this and moist, or would they be crunchy hard like a biscotti? And crunchy I'm trying like to decide if they. Well, biscottis are crunchy because you double, you double cook mm -hmm. them, right? So maybe mm -hmm. that's what. I don't know, but at the same time, maybe it just needs a little something, like a little something to bring out that chocolate umami, like a little bit of Need some coffee salt. or a little, a little bit of salt. salt. There's no salt. Mm. I don't know. But I don't you know, remember. But you know what I mean? Or a, a, a little bit of Marmite. Oh, yes. <laughs> a little bit of Marmite would be great. But it's just something that would, you know. Um, oh, and there's no index, right? Fricassee of brains. <laughs> <laughs> That's in the wrong section. Um, oh, is that the cookie section? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, where is it? I Now I can't find it. Needs something. I don't know what it is. I don't know what that is, but it does need something. And I was trying to, I, I don't think I've ever, I've never had them homemade, but at first I thought they'd be like, you know, when you get a, I don't know if they still sell these, an assorted tin of cookies. Yes. But the chocolate the, ones with the, but they usually have that vanilla flavor in the middle. Is that, is that the one? Oh, no, no, I'm not thinking okay. of those. I'm thinking of, they are chocolate fingers and they've got little prick holes in the top and they're, they're hard, they're crunchy, they snap. So more like a shortbread. Yes, I thought that might, mm. but it's just not. Okay, so. Um, Glenn even left some behind. Yeah. <laughs> so Glenn's not impressed. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.